And we welcome you aboard. This is Sports Tonight, and I'm Fred Hickman. Coming up, the one-man Cuban Missile Crisis is in the show. The Maverick owner of Dallas is fined and suspended by the NBA. A little jaunt under the court made for one very expensive chalupa. We'll revisit. <laughs> Vince Cellini here, opening with a closer. Not just any closer, he is Mr. Automatic. The Yankees take care of business by signing reliever Mariano Rivera to a four-year, $39.99 million contract, making him the highest-paid relief pitcher in baseball. In an unusual twist, owner George Steinbrenner tried mass appeal in signing Rivera. We'll explain. And I'm Kara Henderson. We'll also chat with the pole sitter for Sunday's big race. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville has got a pretty new red car, is with a new team with his old number nine. Is he ready for a third Daytona win? Stick around and we'll find out. Fred? Well, we're going to get started with Mark Cuban. He may look like the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Clever disguise, though. He is, in reality, the single biggest pain in the neck NBA Commissioner David Stern has at this moment. And I like him. Cuban has been fined $10,000 by the league and suspended for two games, and here's why. The Mavs leading the Cavs big and late last night. Could have run out the clock three straight times, but didn't. Gary Trent winds up with the ball and scores. The place goes nuts. Why? Because the Mavs break 100 points, which means free chalupas for everybody in the joint. Well, Cleveland apparently wasn't hungry. They dropped nine straight games, had no sense of humor left. Push comes to shove, and here comes Cuban. He's not having any of it. He wants a piece of somebody. Well, not really. That puts Cuban over $400,000 in fines this season for everything from sitting on the floor during a game to publicly criticizing officials. As for Cuban's latest move, Hey, he had to do what he had to do. I just saw one of their guys hit our guy's head on the ground. It was just instinct. I didn't even think about it until I got out there. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> It was just, you know, it's just, you, you know, that's all I can say. I was instinct. I'm sure I'll pay the price. There's not too many legends in this locker room, but Gary Trent is now a Chalupa legend. So <laughs> it's, uh, he's taken a step toward the annals of Mavericks history. Yeah, you know, it was a pretty ugly scene out there. The Cavs' Robert Trailer goes for a game for throwing a punch. Wesley Person, just back after 26 games hurting, was right in the middle of things. Gary Trent, as Nash said, a Chalupa hero. And Cavs coach Randy Whitman says, and I quote, we'll remember this. Well, we were anxious to hear what Taco Bell might have to say about having its good name sullied in this melee. A semi-official told us this. That's it. See? He uh -huh. said it's cool. Hmm. A chalupa. I like the Mavericks. Kara? Oh, okay, Fred. You know, I agree with you about his excitement and what he's bringing to the game, but just because he owns a team doesn't mean he owns the game in general. And he's got to calm down a little bit. I mean, I think it's just getting a little bit out of hand, and I think the NBA finally hit him where it hurt. They're not allowing him to come to two of the games, which, unlike finding a billionaire, really actually means something. I mean, come on, he's not on the team, and somebody might need to remind him of this, because charging out onto the floor is just a little much for an owner, don't you think, Vince? Well, Kara, I think you hit it on the head. He's really not on the team. Cuban is out of touch with reality right now. I mean, he's always thought he's one of the guys, but like you said, he thinks he's one of the players, so we helped him along a little bit, racing him on the floor with his little double zero jersey. Coming to the rescue, there's Mark Cuban. We did it for TV purposes only. Mark, come on. You're lucky you weren't Rudy Teed in the melee. You know, running into a crowd, like rolling up on a guy, and boom! Oh. Rudy Tom Donovich did it to Kermit Washington years ago, and that's what happened. And seriously, Cuban could have come running at somebody out of the corner of their eye. They didn't realize it was Mark Cuban. Things could have been much, much worse. Mark, come on. You want to cheer the team, cheer him on. But stay off the floor. Well, you know what? I disagree with both of you guys in a way. I, I think that... The guy is genuinely in love with his team, and he's in love with his fans. I perfectly well understand what Cleveland's talking about. You never try to show up a team. You don't run up the score. You just walk it out. But as Nash also said earlier, hey, look, you know, we had to do something to thank our fans down here, and I think that in, in its essence is a good thing. So I don't think he's trying to be a bad guy. It comes off that way sometimes. You know, I give him an A for effort, but a, a B or C or a D or an E for execution. Kara? All right, avoiding arbitration, the Yankees have finally closed the deal to make Mariano Rivera the highest paid reliever in baseball. Rivera has agreed to a four-year, four $39.99 million contract. 
Now, why the weird number? Well, George Steinbrenner insisted that the figure come in less than $40 million, but he did help seal the deal by agreeing to donate $100,000 to Rivera's church in Panama. Rivera received a no-trade clause for the first two years of the contract. He can also terminate the deal after two seasons and become eligible for free agency. He reported a day late to spring training because of food poisoning and won't begin throwing until the beginning of next week, but he does feel good about the deal. It was out of my mind, but not 100%. And uh, now that this thing is over, I can just focus on my season, you know, my spring training and carry over to my season. We've been working on trying to sign Mo for years, actually, uh, and we were never able to uh, get to the point of a mutual yes. And, uh, and you know, the last few days, we've we covered a lot of ground in recent days, and, uh, and ultimately, we're here today. The Yankees don't have the highest payroll in baseball. The Dodgers do, but it's close, and their closer has something to do with it. These five players account for almost half of the 2001 payroll. Worth it? What do you think? Out of pinstripes and into Red Sox, David Cohn showed up today for his first practice with his new team, looking to secure a spot in the starting rotation that's a bit shaky behind Pedro Martinez and looking to bounce back from this season where he was the worst starter in the American League. But that's what spring training's all about, a new start. It hasn't really sunk in as of yet. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little better feel for it every day mm -hmm. until I put on that Red Sox uniform and, and really look at myself in the mirror. You know, it's, it's not going to sink in. And, and then again, until you get up into the regular season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I've, as I said before, I've got to make this team and get to that point. But yeah. you know, the first time I walk into Yankee Stadium with a Red Sox uniform on, and, and uh, first time I walk into Fenway and pitch there, it's certainly going to be an exciting feeling. Oh, he'll hear about it. The Blue Jays and White Sox called in the commission today to help settle the feud over the David Wells Mike Soraka trade. Blue Jays GM Gord Ash called Bud Selig's office to request an intervention. Toronto is seeking compensation because of Soraka's bad shoulder. How bad his shoulder actually is, is at the heart of the debate. White Sox GM Kenny Williams left a message with Ash last night giving him the go ahead to send the matter to Bud Selig, and Williams says he looks forward to all the facts coming out. Vince? talk about a wild finish. Cardinal phenom Rick Ankeel had one in his nightmare postseason back in October. And Keel is chronologically an adult and now at a crossroads that will either mean enjoying his 20s as a big leaguer or losing direction. Our John Giannone is in Jupiter, Florida with one of the more compelling stories in spring training baseball. John? Yeah, Vince, you know, it is easy to forget that Rick Ankeel was selected by Tony La Russa over Darryl Kyle to start the Cardinals' playoff opener against the Atlanta Braves, and that was a reward for a great rookie season. But what it ended up being really was the start of a horrific stretch, one that conjured up images of Steve Blast at his worst and had the baseball world asking, what is the deal with Rick Ankeel? Well, on Friday, Ankeel reluctantly provided some answers. It was attention Rick Ankeel neither coveted nor embraced, a topic of conversation he had no interest in pursuing. Uh, I'm more comfortable on the field than I am right here right now. But Ankeel knew he would have to revisit his wild child tendencies, his October meltdown that included nine wild pitches and four playoff innings. That happened on Friday. Ankeel and the Cardinals say for the final time. The questions I'll respond to are the ones that address my plan and not my past. That's already been written and talked about and it's out there. It's old news. There's nothing I can add and I don't care to repeat it or dwell on it. I hope you don't either. I was with them all off season. We didn't we didn't talk about it in concern once. So, you know, I joked around a couple of times at night when we were playing darts cuz you got to be careful, but uh, other than that, <clears throat> he's fine. And Keel's anxiety on Friday belied a supremely confident makeup that is as much his trademark as a biting curveball. It is that personality that keeps those around Ankeel optimistic about the 21-year-old's long-term prognosis. He's a real special talent, and then between the years, he's special. He experienced a great equalizer. You learn a lot from at-bats and innings. And Rick's, Rick's so young yet, but he's been amazing how quickly he learns, and that's how he's going to handle this situation, too. He has too much confidence and, and, and arrogance and, you know, all that when he takes the mound to, to let something like that be him. I think all this stuff... 
as far as starting your career off this way is gonna be it's gonna be funny to look back in five six years and laugh about this the biggest thing is everybody just said you know relax go out there and uh, you know just use the things that that, you, that made you get here and, and stick with that now Ann Keel said that his modest goal for the year is to make every single start and when asked if 200 innings was a reliable goal he said sure Vince it was one of several one-word answers Ann Keel provided today well, John, it's been well documented. Ann Keel worked with a sports psychologist in the offseason. What are the early results of that? Any? Yeah, you know, he met with uh, a noted sports psychologist, Harvey Dorfman, who worked with the Swing and A's back in the 70s. He's a Scott Boris employee now. Met with him about two days a week out on the West Coast during the offseason. Still talks to him once a week now. And what Dorfman told Ann Keel to do is develop a pattern in your mind of a focus what to do if you do throw a wild pitch he definitely wants Ann Keel to put the past in the past but basically Vince he's telling him if you don't learn from the past you are doomed to repeat it well still a lot of pressure pressure every pitch under scrutiny thanks John well I for one am pulling for the kid this gentle nudge of a reminder for full spring training information check out CNNSI.com click on baseball then on the little grapefruit and cactus symbol and you are right in the mix Full spring stories, including more on Cardinal Rick Ann Keel and teammate Mark McGuire's recovery from knee problems. So, step up to the plate. Still straight ahead tonight, we get our motor running for this weekend's Daytona 500. Kara's conversation with the driver who's been voted most popular on the NASCAR circuit 10 straight years and this year's pole sitter. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville. Also, the road grind continuing for Kobe and the Lakers. He tries to bounce back from that 18.6 turnover performance in Philly. Another toughie tonight in Charlotte, at least for a while. Plus, Jack appears to be all the way back. The 61-year-old legend is bogey-free and in the lead at the Verizon Classic. We'll go there, so bear down for the rest of the show. Won't you? Sports Tonight is brought to you by Holiday Inn Express, the smart choice for travelers who want to stay smart. The Great White has an olfactory system that can detect a single drop of blood in the water from up to a mile away. Their jaws can crush titanium at an astonishing four tons per square centimeter. All in all, they're nature's perfect killing machine. For how many years have you been studying the Great White? For well, none. I don't even swim. Oh, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Is there an insurance company that believes knowledge is critical in managing risk? Without question, the St. Paul. Just a bit of magic, oh, you gotta see it, so like the unexpected, quite thickly perfected, ahead of your head, I said, our stuff is what dreams are made of, time to bring it on home. High definition television, made possible by Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. On vacation, there are three things to consider when selecting a hotel. Location, location, location. Kissimmee St. Cloud, right next door to the Walt Disney World Resort. Call for a free visitor's guide. Order your free visitor's guide with information on hotels, attractions, and more. Everything you need to plan your vacation. Call now. Kissimmee St. Cloud, right next door to the Walt Disney World Resort. Our job, helping people's feet. This rebar is bouncy stuff. I hate walking on rebar. It's like a fire burning in your feet. Our Dr. Scholl's Advantage Work Insole has the advanced force line energy return system. It's futuristic. It's clinically proven to relieve foot and lower back pain. Feels good, like my feet are getting help. Get inside the NBA with the best double team in basketball. Andre Aldridge and Kevin Lockery work the give and go with your questions and comments online. It's this week in the NBA, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern on CNN. Here's how we fill the lane on the break. See, 
Lakers and the Hornets, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant are visiting Charlotte tonight. Early on, off the miss, O'Neal outletting to Bryant for the huge acrobatic slam. Who says they can't get along? Tie game. Second quarter, more of the same. O'Neal, another long pass to Bryant. The conversion. Lakers by four. You zip ahead to under a minute left in the game for more Kobe. Uh, driving the hoop. Baseline hits the reverse scoop that draws nothing but net. Bryant 25, 10, and 10. Second career triple double. Shaq with 38 as the Lakers win 99 to 94. Spurs and the T Wolves mean Duncan versus Garnett. Speaking of Garnett, right there, 31 and 16 in the game for him. Third quarter, close game. Spurs up one. Here's TD. Throws it down. Duncan 26 and 12. 60 to 57 Spurs. Now Spurs up by nine. Duncan. Find Samaki Walker down low for the big dunk. 80 to 69. The governor's ticked. Spurs win 91 to 85. They're 10th in 12. The Timberwolves have lost three straight. And that is the way we run the break and finish. Hey guys, check this out. Allen Iverson is the answer to getting fans to come to the Clippers game. The 76ers were giving away mini bobblehead dolls to the first 5,000 kids at the game tonight. And it was such a hot commodity that people were actually renting kids to get their hands on one. You want one? They're already on the online auction site, eBay. By the way, Iverson had 42 points in the 15-point win. Vince? Well, that doll was almost actual size. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Great player. <laughs> All right, Buffalo Bills wide receiver Eric Moles. What's his story? Well, he was two weeks away from unrestricted free agency, then decided he wanted to stay home. Fresh off a franchise record 94 catches last season, Moles re-ups with the Bills at six years and between 40 and 45 million dollars. Keeping Moles in place was new GM Tom Donahoe's number one priority. Moles said he spoke with fellow wideouts like Keyshawn Johnson and Chris Carter who encouraged him to stay in Buffalo rather than go somewhere else to start over. And now something entirely different. Last night we aired that exclusive interview with Ray Carruth jailed in the murder of his former girlfriend Sharika Adams and you responded in kind with emails. Not so kind, all of them. Ray Carruth sickens me. I almost put him in the same category as Ray Lewis. No sympathy whatsoever. It's all about pride and ego with these guys. And this. I believe your years of imprisonment will afford you, Ray, the quiet time to learn how to spell Adams. You might recall Ray said he didn't even know her last name. And then finally, I'm here in Germany watching the special that you have on Ray Carruth. I believe that Ray is innocent and he will prevail so he can move on with his life and raise his beautiful baby boy, Chancellor. We thank you all. Kara? Awesome. Bill from Dawsonville joins me now. Bill Elliott, two-time Daytona 500 champ who has secured the pole for this Sunday's race. Bill's leading the charge in his number nine, Dodge Intrepid. Dodge returning to Winston Cup racing for the first time since the early 80s. Welcome, Bill. What a week you've had with a new team, but back in your old number nine, in a new car with the Dodge, and you've secured the pole position for the first time in a long time. Was it all a surprise? Well, it really was. I mean, I felt like we'd have been in the top ten. We'd have probably been a pretty decent, you know, in a pretty decent position. But it was the way it ended up. You know, the guys had a little bit of something left, and they put it to me when it was time to go. So I'm very pleased. Now, you've won two Daytona 500s, but those were both back in the 80s. How much of a different driver are you now? Well, I almost won it a couple of years ago, and I came pretty close last year, and uh, I've had some awful good runs here, you know, in the past five or six years. So, you know, now I've got to take the experience and put it to work when it comes, when the green flag falls Sunday afternoon, and, and that's the key point to this play. It's a handling racetrack, temperature is going to mean, you know, we're going to be uh, quite significant here. Uh, it's been hotter, one of the hotter Daytonas that I've experienced here in a long time. So you got to have your car working well in the corners. Uh, you got to be able to, to run with the pack when you need to and be able to, to, to go on and do what you need to do. Have a good crew behind us, and that's where, you know, Ray Abraham comes in. And with all that, being having Dodge behind you, you know, I don't see how you can't not have a good weekend. Now, you did. You sold your racing operation at the end of last year. You hooked up with Ray Everham. How much has it helped you to no longer be an owner-driver, but just be a driver again? <laughs> well, that was probably the happiest day of my life. I guess it's like owning a boat. The day you buy it and the day you sell it. 
and I guess that may be the true in a race team also, but, you know, I don't need to be a car owner. I mean, to me, I, I feel more comfortable behind the wheel. You know, Ray come in and, uh, you know, with approach with this Dodge deal, you know, he decided to do it, and I'm proud for him. Uh, he's, he's, he's had a full plate. He's done a good job with, with all the stuff that he's done to this point. And I feel like we'll do nothing but get better as the season progresses. Now, you've had some great years when you've won Daytona, especially back in 85 when you had that record-breaking 11-win season. Can it really jumpstart a season to win this thing? Oh, absolutely. I think even if even if you don't win, if you come out here with a good finish Sunday afternoon, that can definitely put a, a positive momentum on your race team for the next several events. Best of luck to you this weekend, Bill. Thank you. All right, back over to you guys. And tonight's Panasonic replay of the day, which is dedicated humbly to Anaheim pitcher Ismael Valdez. So what happened was he was late for an 11:30 team meeting today, but not for lack of trying. See, he was actually right on time, but at the wrong place. And instead of finding his team in Tempe, he arrived at the A's camp a few miles away in Phoenix. A's manager Art Howe pointed Valdez in the right direction. No sweat, manager Mike Sosha said. Ismail bought pizza for everybody. They all had a good laugh, and it's all good now. See? Chalupa? I, you know what? I hate chalupas. Here we go. Lakers and the Hornets. No, yeah, not that there's anything wrong. Late, late in the game, Lakers by three. Kobe Bryant drives around. Eddie Robinson throws a tough lefty reverse and gets nothing but net. Oh, there's another look at it. I cannot believe that. That's a beauty. It's tonight's replay of the day. <laughs> have several other items. Replay of the day is brought to you by Panasonic High Definition Television. HD TV from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta save it. So like the unexpected. Perfectly perfected. Ahead of your head. I said... High definition television, made possible by Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. Sprint is challenging small businesses all across America to spend less money. Announcing the Sprint Small Business Challenge. If your business spends at least $50 a month on domestic and international long-distance calls, we'll lower your total bill or give you $100 of free long-distance just for trying. It's easy. First, send us your long-distance bill. We'll evaluate it. Then, we'll lower it or give you $100 of free long-distance guaranteed. Just call 1-888-SPRINT-BIZ. There are no long-term commitments, no hidden fees. End of story. That's how confident we are that we can deliver the highest quality service with the lowest bill. And that's just part of the good news. With Sprint Savings Alert, you can be notified if our rates go down during the year. So take the challenge. Call 1-888-SPRINT-BIZ for details and get a lower bill or $100 of free long distance guaranteed. Sunday night, a Superstation premiere. They thought he was dead. They were dead wrong. The patient has come out of a coma for seven years. Now is the time. He's back from the grave with a bone to pick. Mind if I play? <laughs> Steven Seagal, Kelly LeBrock, the Superstation premiere. Come get some. Hard to kill. 8 Eastern Sunday night on the Superstation. Company in New Jersey tonight trying to make up ground on the Devils. Second period, 3-2 Devils. Martin Brodeur beaten by Bill Tibbetts for his first and a goal tied at three. Third period still tied. Mario Lemieux gets his own rebound and scores his 20th of the year for three Penguins. Same score late third period. Peter Sikora behind the net makes a nice pass to Jason Arnott for the goal and it's tied up at four. So we go to overtime, same score. Yarmir Yager breaks in by himself, but he is robbed by Brodeur. When you have some words for our nod, it ends tied at four. And you know, this is why we love senior golf. We get to see Jack Nicholas back on the leaderboard. The new President's Cup captain is playing in the Verizon, and he is playing well. Let's go out to the golf course where he was up to some of his old tricks. On the par 5 14th, his approach is dead on. 
three-quarter punch shot. He would birdie this one to get to three under. Another familiar face on the course. Ray Floyd, his approach on 10, and he's going to hit it very close. He's going to sink that putt a little later to grab the lead at three under. Hale Irwin's approach on 16, a solid iron into the green. Leaves Hale, but five feet for birdie. And, a good one it is. and here is what the leaderboard looks like after the first round. Isn't this great? The Golden Bear, winless since 96, in the lead after a first round 67. He said he's finally feeling good after getting hip replacement surgery two years ago. Tied with him, Doug Tool, and one back, Raymond Floyd. And now a story that's really a non-story. It seems North Carolina basketball coach Matt Doherty made an offhand remark that made him somewhat of a heel. During Carolina's win at Duke on February 1st, Doherty said in a team huddle, the Duke's cheerleaders are still the, quote, ugliest in the ACC. Well, someone overheard him, got a hold of the comment, put it on an Internet message board, and, well, Doherty got in trouble. He has since apologized in a letter to the Duke cheerleaders, copied that letter to men's hoop coach Mike Krzyzewski. Now, in an exclusive, we have reaction from Duke's campus in Durham. Duke has the ugliest cheerleaders in the ACC. Mm. He, he obviously doesn't get out thing. too much. I just think it's kind of sad that a rivalry about basketball has to come down to what cheerleaders look like. Yeah. Like, that's really superficial. That's terrible. It's totally terrible. No, I really think <laughs> that he was wrong to make those comments, but I also think it was made in a huddle, and I think somebody was wrong also to take them and run with them. Well, I think just because it was made in the huddle doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that it's right to say it. And, you know, I think that as a basketball coach, you've got to be above belittling other students from another team, if that's part of your motivational strategy, then I think he a little more class that. is needed. He didn't point to the cheerleaders and go, you're matter. ugly. He just said it, it right doesn't there. Doesn't matter. He might have been saying it to try to break, uh, you know, some of the tension. The motivation a, does I'm not, not excuse right it. Wrong, but I'm saying it was said in privacy in their well, home. Well, let me straighten this out for you guys. Coe College, by the way, everybody knows, had the ugliest cheerleaders <laughs> in history while I was a student up there back in the 70s. We had one. I'm telling you, the guy that picks up the, the girl had to wear like a weightlifter belt. I'm not kidding. That's a true story. She's probably watching and ready to sue. They'll love that at the alumni dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should tell that I'll story. tell that a while. Yeah. <laughs> Man, anyway. Move on away from that. Here's your Zippy Chippy update. You know Zippy Chippy, don't you? Ten-year-old gelding who's never won a race, ever, not won. Well, he had lost all 90 races he started. That included the 40-yarder against some minor league baseball player in Rochester, New York. But tonight in Philadelphia, he had a shot because he was running in a field of horses who had also never won never felt the victory wreath six furlong affair seven horse field and zippy chippy not only lost he got dusted seven lengths behind the winner who was bit Aquino. well zippy i'm here on a mission of mercy I'm from downtown from mitch and murray i said the real favor <laughs> is to start taking bids on alpo and elmers <laughs> meantime kara's getting married soon so maybe you can get work pulling their wedding carriage around what do you think <laughs> i'm telling you that isn't even a horse that's two guys in a horse suit <laughs> <laughs> that isn't even a real horse. With a B. No <laughs> horse is that slow. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this portion of Sports Tonight. We thank you for watching, and stay tuned if you have SI, because some more fun's about to happen.